We all remember how busted the Agent of Treachery was. It wasn't that long ago that it was running rampant through Standard. Well, today we're playing the Agent of Treachery's creepy little cousin. We're talking about the Mind Flayer. We're running Demir Control, Steal Your Creatures. Cue the intro. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel today, and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're talking about, like I said, Agent of Treachery's little creepy cousin here. We're talking about the Mind Flayer, and we're running it into a Demir shell. This card is a lot of fun, and I enjoyed this one a lot. So stay tuned for all the gameplay footage. But before we break this thing down, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I just ask if you take one moment to do so. It's a free way to help support the channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll be notified whenever we post a video, which is three times a week. That way you don't miss out on any future content, because we do post three times a week. Don't forget. All right, let's dive into it, guys. Let's talk about the deck a little bit. So how does this deck work? So the idea is we're trying to steal our opponent's permanence i.e. their creatures uh we're doing it through tempted by the auric and we're doing it through mind flayer uh the auric is pretty cool because we steal the creature and we outright get to keep it this is a sorcery speed uh spell so like i said just straight up we get to keep it the downside check out the loyalty to blue there it's a little tricky to play but if you're running only two colors it shouldn't be too hard to get that third uh blue devotion down uh but it does get a little tricky in some spots but very very powerful card and the fact that once we steal their creature we don't really need to worry about anything else we don't have to worry about having mana open to sacrifice it in case things go wrong advice for you know anything like that so that's pretty cool but i like the card a lot uh mind flare as well does a very similar thing but this one has a little bit of a liability to it the fact that it controls our opponent's creature as long as mind flayer is on the battlefield that makes things a little more tricky because if mind flayer dies then of course our opponent gets their creature back so how are we going to take care of, of that little liability well we're gonna have to sacrifice things right uh once we have their creature on our side we're, we, we of course want to use it and gain as much value off of it as possible by attacking our opponent with it repeatedly but if our mind flare is targeted we need to have a way to sacrifice the creature so we have deadly dispute which sacrifices a creature and gives us a treasure as well as draws us two cards so a lot of value here um i would prefer to use this on the early game with our eye twitch here we'll explain that in a minute but um it is there as a secondary backup to the mind flayer's ability to sacrifice their opponent's uh creature that we steal but the main way we really want to do it is through our own turgrid's lantern Turgrid's Lantern is a way that we can uh, target either player, including ourselves. We can sacrifice a, a non-land permanent, so that's our way to sacrifice it for free. No mana needed. Once this is on the battlefield, we can repeat this process for free. So we play this out on turn four. We play the Mind Flayer turn five, and we're ready to go. We can already sacrifice it, which feels really great. So there's three of these in the deck. This is also a great way to win the game. We can play the Turgrid side of this, the creature side, and steal our opponent's things that way um through sacrifice abilities which we have um so that's really nice um that's gonna be the main way though to sacrifice things on our side and then uh the dispute like i said we'd rather use it on like turn two with the eye twitch the eye twitch is gonna come out early um in this current format of 2022 learning is a really powerful tool so that's why we have eye twitch in here as our first one mana drop uh, because it's a good body to block with early on it's, we're able to learn, we're able to fix our mana, we're able to do some stuff with it. But we can also sacrifice it on turn two, get some treasure, ramp off of it, draw some cards, and learn. This combo right here is a lot of value in two cards. Um, another way to get to the end game, though, to try to, you know, mind flare win or get to the turret uh, win, we're going to have to kind of control the board as we go. So we got a little bit of spot removal with Blood Chief's Thirst. We have the Soul Shatter, which pairs really nicely with the turret. If we actually hit a uh, Soul Shatter with a turret on the field, we get to steal their creature, which is nice. We also have three divide by zeros. We just talked about how good learn is. Um, and we have two Hagra Maulings. It also doubles as a land, of course. And then our draw spell is going to be our Graven Lore because we're running Snowlands. And our board sweeper will be Blood in the Snow, which is going to repeatedly get us back our Eye Twitch. Or in some cases, we can get back our Turgrid, which is really nice. Um, and of course, we're running a full package of Snowlands and then our dual lands here and a Faceless Haven. And then lastly, let's talk about the sideboard a little bit here. So the sideboard I decided to go with is, um, I always like to go with two environmental sciences to fix the mana, one mascot exhibition to finish the game. And here's where we kind of get a little bit, uh, you know, different. We have one teaches our teachings. It's going to draw some cards. We have two, uh, fumes, which could, uh, end up, 
you know, exiling one of our creatures, which is not ideal because we want to get the learn off the uh, eye twitch. But uh, if we can exile one of their creatures to kill another one of their creatures, that's really nice. We could do that with these two spells, obviously. So that's why this is here. And then we have pest summoning, which is another great way to, you know, maybe sacrifice to a dispute or block and get us a little bit of life gain. So a lot of really nice synergies here. I think the deck worked out really well. So stay tuned for the gameplay footage. And then, uh, when we're all done with that, we'll come back here for some final thoughts and wrap it up there. And then, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Enjoy the video, have some fun, and we'll see you at the end. Peace. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. We're going to be, uh, for lack of better term or words, we're going to be stealing um, some wins today on the ladder. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Up to 91% Mythic now. It's our first actual video streaming in Mythic, so pretty excited about that pretty bad hand to be honest we have the deadly dispute which is great but if i don't have an eye twitch to go with it it's typically not a great start especially with two mana i would keep this if we had a third land but we don't so i don't know i think i have to mull this hand yeah oof oh this just got a lot worse okay two bad moles okay or two bad hands uh my opponent is mulling as well though for at least one so i gotta mull a second time here Jeez, what is going on what is going on uh yeah yeah um i'm gonna need that graven lore eventually right so what a bad start bad little start here but that's fine i guess we'll make it work well we're gonna have to we're gonna have to right so aggro mulling is a land ranger class okay okay that's something let's uh it's not attack let's hold that for some blocks against the uh two two here they're running mono green it looks like so it's gonna be a pretty tough matchup for us actually it's not a tough matchup it's just <laughs> with the the fact that we mulligan that many times it just became a really tough matchup you know rough rough start okay they invest mana into the wolf. That's fine. I think science is there is the best play. All right. Well, that's bad. Um, we top deck uh, dispute with uh, the fact that we just threw away our eye twitch feels bad we having the eye twitch with the dispute is really really good all right we're looking for blood on the snow at this point right man that's gonna get really nasty and big over time let's go ahead and do this and then hold up some instant speed removal here the uh, Soul Shatter hits the highest converted mana cost. Not exactly the biggest creature, but the, the most cost effective. So in this case, it would hit the Ooze, being that it's a three drop. Hagra Mauling is the no good here because I don't have another black source. And whenever uh, the Ooze attacks, put a 1 1 counter on each attacking creature. Okay, I probably should have done this prior to the attack then, but it's fine. At least they commit the Ranger class counter onto the Ooze. So no harm, no foul, because they would have put that 1-1 one, one counter on the Wolf had I done that prior to combat. So it all ends up the same. Divide by zero. Not bad, but not good. Um, doesn't hit the the token that's why it's not good i'm going to graven lore i think as long as i can survive this turn which i should be able to i'm going to graven lore and then i'm going to really hope that we can dig out a uh, blood in the snow and then if we can find a blood in the snow and bring the eye twitch back we'll be all right i could also just snag it uh you know a card to steal the five five that wouldn't be bad either all right, they're gonna spread the damage out here. That's fine. I 
I could have blocked this with the Faceless Haven, but I really got to go for the Graven Lore here. I think the Blood and the Snow is pretty much going to be the most elite thing we can do right now. And being able to dig, uh, you know, as five cards deep into the deck, I would hope that we could find one. I've been wrong before, though, so let's find out. Let's find out. Okay. So, we definitely don't need that. We definitely don't need that. Mind Flayer is pretty sweet here, but... Oh, man. So, if we Mind Flayer the dog, what are the odds that they have, like, a, a fight spell, right? Just fight the Mind Flayer, and then we, we lose the creature we just stole. Three for five, so then we, we need at least... Yeah, I don't think the Flayer is going to get it done, to be honest. I really don't. I think we, I don't think we keep anything. I think we just dig. We do need a black source to hit in order to play a blood in the snow. So I guess keep that on top. Mind flare is just not good enough. There we go. Paid off. It paid off. It all paid off. Let's go. Hopefully no ways to making things indestructible. Like I said, Blizzard Brawl could be a thing. And if Blizzard Brawl's on, on the docket here, we're we're in trouble. Blizzard Brawl is a automatic win here, because then they get the uh keep the wolf and the wolf becomes indestructible and gets the one one counter, making it six. I could obviously block it with the eye twitch, but that doesn't seem like a very foolproof plan. Looking pretty good now, though. Uh, feeling all right now, at least. Couple of divide by zeros is decent. Um, making them replay this seems pretty tempting. Like, now, before they can activate it. Uh, actually, no, let's wait. Let's wait one more turn. Let's go here. That way they can't activate the Asika's Chariot, right? And then we'll pass the turn. And when they go to attack, prior to combat, we'll bounce the uh, Ranger class, making them have to replay uh, it and lose value. I, I honestly can't believe we're coming back after having the mulligan that many times. But here we are, making a uh, making a final stand here. All right. So they're going to the attack step. So we divide by zero here. And we'll grab a mascot because we're trying to close now. We're trying to close this out now. Yep. I still make a big block here and then we deadly dispute. And then uh, we get two cards plus we get to learn, which is great. So we learn. What do we want to do with the learn this time around? Um. What do we want to do? Pest summoning seems pretty good. Do we have anything in the hand we want to cycle? I don't think we do have anything we want to get rid of in our hand. So I think we're going to take the pest summoning. It's a good way to block, buy us some time um, to do some things. Teachings isn't bad. Uh, teachings might be the play. Teachings is a little bit more late, later in the game. Because uh, obviously we have more of a hand now thanks to the dispute. But... Teachings is good for later in the game. Okay. Feeling all right. Feeling A-OK -okay here. They replay the Ranger class. That's fine. And they buy it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so... Do we activate, let's see, one, two, three, activate, one, two, three. Okay, we don't think we activate anything here. I think we just go, we slam the exhibition here. Buys us a lot of time. And, uh, yeah, we can wait till they, they might actually activate the Asika's Chariot here. And if they do that, we might be in a pretty good spot. Let's just hold the mana. Hold the mana. So here's the idea, right? So they're gonna they're gonna activate a Seeker Sherry. I almost guarantee it, right? And then when they do, we can kill it. And that solves that problem. 
We got to do it before they attack, though, because once they swing, they get to create the copy, right? So once it attacks. Okay, they're not activating it. That's pretty odd. Okay, so in that case, whatever thing they put the 1-1 counter on, we block it with the Faceless Haven. That's the backup plan. Backup plan, activate. Actually, do we take the 3 and maybe just kill the 2-2? Two -two, and then I just Blood Chief's Thirst to 3-3. Three -three. That way we don't actually lose the Faceless Haven. That could be something. Or I could just kill both. Like, if we do this, and then Hagra Molly, that could be pretty good. See if they activate anything here, though, because, again, they have some instant speed nonsense that's about to occur. So, let's see what they do. Perfect. If I do it now... I could divide by here's the thing I could hag or mauling this right but they have mana open and I don't remember but I'm pretty sure blizzard brawl is an instant speed card which does give indestructibility and if they have that they win um or I could just divide by zero this back to their hand but then they just replay it because they have enough mana yeah so I have to go for this okay it's my only hope nice we got it all right I was worried about blizzard brawl but we're good I really should find out if Blizzard Brawl is a uh, instant speed card. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm a little bit too uh, paranoid about it right now. But that worked out really nicely. That worked out fairly well. Another Asika's Chariot though is pretty annoying. Um, this isn't bad though. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and then we can, uh, yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's play Turgrid here. Turgrid's not a bad play, because, uh, Turgrid's gonna be able to make, uh, some steals for us. And, uh, what we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna Blood Chief's Thirst. Just one of these. Same idea as before, we're just gonna, uh, prevent our opponent here from being able to activate a Seeker's Chariot. But that does leave us closed out for the rest of the, the plays here. No more, no more plays for us. I haven't forgotten that we have the uh, treasure, which is great. Getting a little nervous here because we're coming down to the wire and we had such a bad start. Okay, so it's a sorcery card. There you go. We figured it out. It's a sorcery card. Um, it does grant indestructibility though, which is really annoying. So I was right about that, obviously, but uh, I shouldn't have been as worried as I was about it because uh, it's not an instant speed play. Good to know. Um, they swing in for five here though. Yikes, that's pretty, it's pretty tough. That's pretty tough. But if they activate the chariot, okay, they're gonna activate it and attack with that instead so they can create a copy. That's fine. I mean, it sucks, but it's okay. Cause uh, they put the one one on the chariot, not the token. So we have two, two, two tokens to deal with here. All right, things are gonna get a little, little strange here. Little strange. If I play this, we have two mana left open. Not enough, my friend, not enough. Okay, so I guess we have to do it this way. That sucks, but it is what it is. It is what it is. One, two, three, and then it has we have enough for divide by zero, so this will at least buy us enough time. And then we divide by zero on the next play. But we keep our opponent from activating the chariot, and we should be okay. This allows them to look at the top card of the library at any time and cast creature spells from the top of their library. That's pretty bad for us. But it looks like we got pretty lucky. No spells on top being cast. All right, now we have enough to play the exhibition and we have divide by zero. So here we go. One HP gang. Let's do it. One HP gang. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. Definitely going to get straight in there. I'm saving all my mana. I know I have some faceless havens here, but I may want to hag or mauling and divide by zero. We just don't know yet. Um, Shambler, kind of annoying. 
I can't really divide that by zero because they're just going to recast it because it's a cheap creature. Problem with the Shambler too is if I target it with this, they get another 1-1. One, one. So pretty much one of the most annoying creatures they could have pulled there. I could divide by zero at the end, end step here and, and go to the sideboard here and maybe grab some stuff. I don't think there's anything really worth grabbing at the moment though. We can... Uh, let me take a look real quick. Uh, gaining a little bit of life to make me feel a little better would be helpful. <laughs> Pest summoning too is not too bad. So I mean there is some stuff there. I could end step divide by zero the ranger class though too which would then really slow him down. Alright. Blizzard brawl. We could we could kind of break up their plans here with this. So I know it gives them a little 1-1 one, one, but... Alright they scoop. As I say, I know it gives him a 1-1 one, one there, but at least it would stop the Blizzard Brawl. And it's kind of a 2-for-1 there, so we'll take it, though. That was a really hard-fought victory, but GG. I'm trying to be better and trying to be smarter about my plays because we're in Mythic now. And uh, trying to take my, my time with these with these games a little bit more than I normally do. But man, does it uh, make for some long, long games. <laughs> games are a lot longer now. See, there we go. That's not a bad hand. At least we got something to work with. We got a turn one kill spell, and then we got a little bit of mid-game steal your stuff, so not bad. We'll make it We'll make it work. Definitely better than a double mulligan. I can, uh, I can handle this. Could use some more land off the top here, though. Ooh, they're playing a rogues deck in 2021? Or 2022. I always say it's 2021 because it's the year that we're in. <laughs> Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at it. Ooh, okay. So I cannot let any creatures hit me. Creatures you control have menace. Okay. So yeah, that's going to be pretty annoying. Uh, Yeah, I actually want to get the lantern down now, actually, because then we could uh, mind flare on curve and then we don't have to worry about them killing it instantly and uh, not being able to sack the uh, opponent's creature. If they kill at an instant speed though before I can actually steal the creature, I've that's pretty unfortunate if that happens, but they're drawing a lot of cards. They're paying full price too for the winged words. They're really digging here for some stuff. Uh let's see what they do with this. Um let's just hold up our instant speed soul shatter. And then on top of that we can uh just activate the Turgrid's Lantern again if we if we want to. Alright, activating the Lantern again. They're taking some mad damage from this. They might want to start discarding some cards here. Alright. Let's do it again. Can't hit a land, then we're going to have to keep doing this, unfortunately. I mean, unfortunately for our opponent. <laughs> Would like to have a Turgrid on the field though, now that they're starting to sacrifice permanent or discard permanents, you know what I'm saying? Alright. They can attack with the Zerith Sand. I have nothing in my graveyard for them to actually take, so I could just give them this for a second here, like just for one go. And uh, potentially steal it, stealing some of their permanents. That could be more valuable to me, uh, so I'm gonna let that actually go through. I could actually end up stealing that, and it could be somewhat of some value to me. Oh, I forgot about the rogue class, though. Yikes. I don't even get to see what it is, either. That's pretty savage. Okay. That is an even better steal. Okay. Shoot, now I'm starting to think I, w I should have done this, because I actually kind of want to steal that. Man, I really regret not doing this earlier now. Should have done that earlier. All right, we steal that. We save our lantern just in case our opponent here wants to feel froggy and kill the mind flare. Then we could just uh, sacrifice their own creature. They stole one of my cards though. That's making me really nervous. First time up against the rogue class though. So just slipped my mind. It is what it is, it happens. It happens. 
hopefully we can just survive at least the mind flare can just survive this one turn cycle and then uh we can use deadly dispute instead but nope we got to use the lantern unfortunately target ourself sack the creature there we go we have another mind flare ready to go same thing kind of rinse repeat here if we have to uh, they only have two mana open though. I doubt there's going to be another creature coming. It looks like they're playing some bigger, bigger things here. Kasima's pretty crazy too to see in the deck. That's pretty cool. It's nice though because we have Graven Lore and now we have a uh, Turgrid's Lantern. So if we take this turn off to not do anything, that's also a okay. I think we got him though, man. I, I know it's a little early and I don't want to say say anything too soon here, but I think we might have him here. I feel pretty good at our position right now. They have three cards in hand, so beating them there on card advantage is nice. But this, again, making me a little nervous. Some of the cards in my deck are pretty good, so <laughs> can't have them uh, using them against me. Looks like they're going to either activate... Okay, so they are. They're going to activate the rogue class level 2, so now they have menace. The third uh, class... You may play cards exiled with rogue class and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. Okay. Here we go. This is where my own cards start to bite me in the butt. Let's hit him with one of these. Three damage is a lot of damage to take at this point in the game when you're sitting at 14, but they do take it. Let's go ahead and go into our deck here. Ooh, not bad. More mind flares. This is all good stuff, to be honest. That can go. We already have a couple of them, so let's just go ahead and do this. And uh, we're going to have to discard a card, unfortunately, here. Uh, Faceless Haven just came in, so it does have a uh, summoning sickness, so we'll just end our turn and we'll discard the Deadly Dispute. You see I'm taking my pauses now guys? I'm trying man, I'm trying. We're trying to pause a little bit longer just to make sure we don't miss anything. Oh, it's eye twitch. That's not bad. That's fine. They probably don't even have a sideboard set up. But they're probably trying to just get in an attack so they can keep stealing my cards. Which is totally fine. I can steal my own eye twitch back. Hit him with it again. Keep it going. Keep the pain going. You know what I'm saying? Keep the pain going. Part of me feels good enough that I, I could just honestly uh, Blood Chief's Thirst this. It's the cheapest, most efficient way to kind of spend my mana for the turn. Because I don't think they're going to have less in cards. I don't think they're prepared for that. But you never know. They might be. I may regret it. Maybe I just steal it. I could use it, you know? It's my card. I could, it definitely synergizes well with my deck, so let's just steal it. I wanted to activate Faceless Haven here to really put the pressure on, but there's a good chance if I kill it, they find something from the sideboard that's pretty relevant or useful. I don't think that's the case, but you never know. And now we have a good body to block with here. Um, I know their creatures do have Menace. I could also sacrifice it with Deadly Dispute here on the end step and draw some cards that way. A lot of value there in the eye twitch, so gonna grab it. All right, they're gonna get a creature back. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. But I'm gonna steal it, so feels a little bad. Oof, a third mind flare. Feels a little bad. Taking three again, or are you going to discard your only card? Ooh, they take three again. Oh, that's... Yeah. Do I have enough to activate the Faceless Haven here? Actually, that wouldn't be game, but pretty close. All right, obviously we Mind Flare this bad boy. My card now. Poison the cup. Saw that coming. All right. Um... One, two, three mana open. Did I play a land this turn? I think I did. I hope not, but I think I did. 
We gotta let that resolve. It is what it is. I could have sacrificed it. I know that, but I need my mana for my uh, Blood Chief's Thirst here. It's because if this thing hits me, it's gonna be bad. And I, I honestly can't remember if I played a land. We didn't. Okay, good. Whew. Let's go. Would have rather stole it, but you know what? That works fine. Is that a good card? Do you need it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you need that card? Oh, let's go. Two in a row. 92%. Climbing them ranks. Let's go. You know what? I kind of have to give credit. For the first time in my life, I'm going to say that uh, I think the rogues player deserves some credit. They're trying to play a, a, an archetype of rogues. They, you know, that's not a thing. And uh, they do it pretty well. That was pretty cool. I, I liked their deck. I liked their style there. But I think I like our deck a little more. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Opponent goes first. It's not a good hand, but I'm afraid to see what would happen if we mulligan. So, gonna keep it. Let's hope we don't have to use the Hagger mulling as a land. We don't. Perfect. Perfect. Top deck, a good blue source there. Feels good. Orzov, you know what this is gonna be, right? Angels, it's always the same. But that's fine. We've become accustomed to the meta these days, and this new meta is all about the angels and the dragons. Pretty much that's about it. Those are the two things you're gonna see the most consistent of. That's annoying. They're probably gonna take a flare here. You know what's really not annoying though is the fact that we can actually kill that just by blocking it with a little eye twitch, so that feels pretty good. Uh yeah, might as well play the other one, sure. No attacks. Alright. Opponent knows my entire hand still. I hate that feeling. Absolutely hate that feeling, but it's okay. Retribution. Uh, disgusting. Yes, that couldn't have been a better top deck, to be honest with you, because we really got to get rid of this before the Retribution hits that second uh, Saga, because then they'll just be able to pick off my eye twitches for literally nothing. And Spellbinder's not an angel, so no harm, no foul there. Spellbinder absolutely crippled from doing damage because of my eye twitches. Uh, that's funny. They're still going to attack, though. Bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for them. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if they knew I could kill it with an eye twitch or not, but that worked out. All right. Well, that last game was kind of strange, but a win is a win, right? A win is a win is a win. So we'll take it. All right. We've got a pretty strange hand here. It's, I mean, strange. I mean, by like, it's a, it's a pretty... I call them heavy hands, where you have things that cost a lot of mana early. Never great, but we do have an eye twitch right away, which could find us some some tools. So, oh, and we top deck the dispute. Beautiful, beautiful. Eye twitch plus dispute equals pure gas. All right, get in there. Yeah, this, this, uh, this hand just got a lot better just by that one card. <sighs> Getting in there. Beautiful. And then um, looks like we're up against some sort of Golgari, Golgari Snow. So I thought it was going to be mono green at first, but it's not, which I'm pretty happy about. I'm glad it's not mono green because mono green is one of the hardest decks to beat right now. It's very good. Let's just keep let's just keep attacking until they want to maybe dispute the attack with some sort of creature but i doubt they're gonna have anything flash right flash is pretty much gone right i guess not not no it's not gone there's things with flash though they have a lot of mana all right so they're playing necromancer which is a snow zombie that brings back other zombies right you may cast spells from long cards in exile oh because so when they put the token they, so when a creature dies that I control, okay, they put a snow counter on it and then they can replay it for any mana. Got it. That's a tricky card. All right. All right. All right. 
If a non-token creature opponent controls would die, exile with an ice counter. So that would include this. That's pretty frustrating, actually. Um, Because now I can't do this. But you know what I can do is I can do this and hopefully our opponent, you know, starts discarding some cards. But that usually is not the case. So now do I want I Twitch to die? Because I don't know if I necessarily want them to have it, you know? Oh, it's going to die. Or no, actually, it's going to take the lantern, obviously. All right. Part of me wants to go block here and then go digging for another land to ensure that I hit my Mind Flare and steal this bad boy. Yeah. Uh, I could get some cards, though, with the dispute. Yeah, let's just not... No, we'll take it. We'll take it. Okay. And we get another lantern. <sighs> okay. Let's have options here. Go here, draw two cards, create a treasure... And then maybe hit a land, and then... Okay, so I can actually do both. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We should hit a land off it. I'm, I'm banking on the fact that we're going to hit a land off that. Of course we don't. All right. Fair enough. All right, so that's going to that's gonna be out there regardless of the situation. Okay, so even if I bounce it with Divide by Zero, they still get to play Eye Twitch, so... That's fine. We're hurting here. I really was hoping for a land there, and then I could have got the lantern out as well on that play. And then we'd be in a much better position here, and then we'd be able to play the Mind Flayer next turn. But instead, we get a little bit mana screwed here, but it's fine. We have Blood on the Snow, which feels really nice. Which means we could get our Eye Twitch back, potentially, here on this uh, big Blood on the Snow. All right, so I'm not I'm not taking that much damage. I am definitely going to divide by zero here. But if I do that, potentially I could miss a land drop again, and I could be just in the same position where I'm playing the lantern and then taking another eight. I think I had to take it, man. I think I had to take this damage and then steal the necromancer next turn. There's such a good chance, though, too, that our opponent just kills the Necromancer easily. That's tough. I guess, yeah, let's just bounce this. Ugh, that's so frustrating, though. I really didn't want to do this. Not drawing land there was so bad for us. So bad for us. Man, I can't get my volume on my music just right. I'm like, I turn it up a little bit and it's too loud. I turn it down. You can't even hear it. All right, let's do that. Another Mind Flare. I mean, it's cool, but <laughs> doesn't exactly get the job done now, does it? At least we get to gain a little bit of life, I suppose. Our own eye twitch being used against us when we play a deck that's built around it, stealing our opponent's creatures. How ironic. Karma is real. It is what it is. We really drew badly here. And our opponent's, like I said, is probably going to have a lot of removal, which is going to be really good against our deck. So I got to imagine we're probably going to lose this one, but you never know. Good news is they can you know, play the Necromancer or activate their Faceless Haven, not both, so we're definitely not taking a whole lot of damage this turn. Three, four, five. If I top deck a land here, I could still get this Blood in the Snow, which would be pretty good, because then I can get my Eye Twitch back. All right, cool. So I should be able to get my Eye Twitch back, right? Because that that's under their control now, so it wouldn't get the counter on it. So let's do that. Let's do that. All right, well, if this resolves and actually kills their Necromancer, um, and we get our eye twitch back and it goes according to plan here, I actually feel like we're in a lot better spot than we just were, and I'm feeling a lot better about this. Oh, we actually get a Turgrid. I forgot that was even in the graveyard. Do they have a lesson board here? Let's find out. They do. Savage. 
All right. I like it. I like it. Turgrid's God of Fright is on the field. Could get a Lantern out next turn. Could potentially start really stealing their stuff, which would be pretty amazing. But I would assume they have some kill spells here. So let's not get too excited. Asika's Chariot. It's not a kill spell. It's not a kill spell. That is a kill spell, though. All right. Masika's Chariot. Such a hard card to deal with, man. We've already done it once, but it is such an annoying card to deal with, if I'm being honest. Um, I could Mind Flare just one of the tokens. I mean, it's not it's not the craziest, the craziest of plays, but, I mean, it works. And it does leave us with a Dispute open. So, I mean, it's not a terrible play. Let's take it. Let's take a little 2-2 two -two token. This does a couple of things for us. It shuts down the Asika's Chariot. So no copying will, will go down. If they want to kill the Mind Flayer, go right ahead. We're going to Deadly Dispute your token, draw some cards off of it. And then uh, either way, we get ahead of our opponent here. So that feels fine. Uh, the Faceless Haven is the only thing that kind of scares me in all of this. It's kind of the equalizer where I, I'm going to have trouble dealing with it. If they kill the Mind Flayer efficiently here. They did kill it efficiently enough, just enough to to activate the faceless haven. So, they they bring out the if they if they know better, they could bring out the faceless haven here, activate the chariot off of it, and then copy the two two. Yeah, looks like that's what they're gonna do. Well played, well played. But we're gonna kind of rinse repeat the same play we just did there. Uh, we'll steal the two two cat that they're just about to generate, and hopefully this time. Um, shoot, I could actually do this and one, two, three, four mana left open. So I do this and I had a four mana left open. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do one, two, three. I can't do it that way, can I? I can't. I can't do it that way because there's not enough snow lands in order to do that, play this card, and get to activate the Faceless Haven. I was trying to put this down, steal the 2-2, two -two, and then I'd still have enough to activate the Faceless Haven in the fight, but there's actually not enough snow land to do that. So... I gotta go with the original plan. And we gotta hope, I mean, it's not the greatest of plans, but... Our, our plan here is to just hope and pray that the Mind Flare survives. Because the idea there, like I said, I wanted to play this, but because it's loyalty to three on blue, I could go blue here, blue here, and then black, black. But then the Faceless Haven needs three snow permanents. So we'd have a black here, a blue here, and then this is not a snow permanent. So unfortunately, it doesn't work. Yep, we're just dead here. That stinks, man. That stinks. It's a body to block with, I suppose, so not not terrible. So let's steal that. Play this. And play this. I mean, let's just unload our hand here and see what happens. <sighs> That's rough, man. That's this was a rough game. I I uh, dang. I don't think we could have won this if we'd taken a different route. I just, yeah, that was just a bad matchup, I think. Faceless Haven comes in, activates the Seekers Chariot. We do have enough blockers, but I'm sure there's removal here. Yep, there's plenty of removal here, so two damage. That'll work. They got us. They got us. Well, still not a bad run, though. I like the deck a lot. I think it does, uh, you know, fairly decent, so pretty happy with how that went down. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap this thing up with some final thoughts. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, really quick, before we dive into this breakdown and talk about what we liked and disliked, if you're here, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. If you haven't heard this message before, I like to give it at the end every single time. But the YouTube algorithm 
loves when people stay to the end so thank you because you're helping the channel grow and, and it means a lot it's getting our video pushed out to more people so i appreciate you all hanging here and, and supporting the channel all the way through to the end and uh let's dive in though let's talk about it i love 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 the deck i think it's really fun um not as busted as our last deck we made i don't think um i definitely you know we picked up a loss here but that's fine i think it's still fairly powerful and uh it's interesting it has a little bit more of a tough play line though anytime you start in uh, including things like sacrifice and things like that things get a little more tricky the play lines get a little a little more not as straightforward so it's a little harder to play but um i really enjoy it and i really think that the eye twitch early on was really really key to making this deck work um being able to get it down and get value off of the dispute uh you know just having a body out there to block with that nobody wants to run through this card is actually really broken in, in standard 2022 but um yeah i like the deck a lot i think it's very fun i personally wouldn't change too much about it divide by zero didn't really seem to you know come into play too much at least not enough to where i was like oh this card stands out as far as the cards that i would cut it's the only one that stands out as well it didn't do a whole lot but um maybe i didn't get enough you know play sampling with it so i could be wrong but if you guys have a idea of another card that may fit into this slot i'd definitely love to hear it in the comments down below as always i'd love to hear any thoughts you might have on the deck on how to make it better some ideas you have you know or some things that you think i'm running that aren't you know great let me know i would love to hear your thoughts and uh that's gonna do it though guys um i like the deck i'm gonna have the link in the description below if you guys want the full deck list head over to the aether hub get the copy imported into arena and lastly before we head out big shout out big ups to my marty mob thank you guys so much i appreciate you guys so so much you have no idea um, if you don't know what the marty mob is it's a membership program that uh, a couple of people have joined and are supporting the channel financially they get a little bit of extra perks and benefits on the channel a little more access to some videos that you may or may not be able to see and uh yeah if you guys want to join hit that join button down below or there's a link in the description below it'll tell you a lot more about it but thank you all so much who are currently in the marty mob name should be a listed on the screen either prior to what i'm saying now or or right now but thank you so much appreciate you all and uh that's going to do it for today's video. We'll see you guys back here on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah. Stay blessed. Peace. Hit him three times like a hat trick. The name is Fizzy No Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic. Yeah, that's magic. Yeah. MTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh, man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks to the meta. This ain't cheap, yeah.